comparing our actuals with what was planned. Okay. How we are going to do that? I'm sorry, let's talk about why on value is needed. So tracking the progress, I mean ensuring that you are making uh, progress as per plan is very, very important because if you do not do the health check, you at end of the entire project, you may fail and you will definitely have a lot of challenges because your scope, your time and cost and everything will be out of control. So you need to create certain checkpoints in your project and at each checkpoint you have to do the health check of your project so that you can take the corrective actions or you can take the preventive actions. If you see that your project is giving some signals that it may derail or the scope or let's say the time, the time that you're spending on the project is more than what is needed, more than what you're planned for. So it gives you enough time to take preventive or corrective actions. So let us quickly talk about how it is done. So we first need to understand these three key elements of on value analysis. PV that is planned value, that means the work that was planned till that point. So till that checkpoint, we are always talking about the work planned till that checkpoint. And the on value, on value is how much work we have completed till that checkpoint. And actual cost, that is AC, that means how much money we have spent in actual in doing that particular work. So we have a quick example to understand that. So suppose you are the, you are the project manager for a construction of 20 miles of sidewalk and according to the plan, according to your original estimation, the cost of construction will be $15,000 per mile and it will take eight weeks to complete. And you make your plan, you start working on it, and after two weeks time, you reach to a checkpoint and you need to do, do the health check. And then when you look at your actuals, at what you have done, you realize that you have completed four miles of the sidewalk and you have spent $55,000 in completing that part of work. And now we need to see how we are doing. Are we on track in terms of scope and time or not? Now before we get into the detail, Please remember, on value is always done with respect to the dollar value. So if I can also say that in eight weeks time, we are going to complete work worth so many dollars. So first we need to identify how much work we were supposed to complete. So let me go to the next slide. Okay. Great. So first we need to check how much work we were supposed to complete. So simple 15,000 by 8, uh, 20 miles, that is your $300,000. So this will be your budget at completion. So we can also say that in eight weeks time, we were targeting to complete work worth $300,000. And now we will calculate what was the work planned for, how much work we had planned till that checkpoint in, at end of two weeks time. So at the end of two weeks time, we, our plan value was $75,000. How we arrived to that? So the total duration is eight weeks. We have completed work. We did work for two weeks. That means 20% of the time is gone. And in 20%, 5% of the time, we were supposed to complete work worth 25% of $300,000. That is $75,000. So we get the value for our first element that is PV. Then we go to the next one, earned value. So earned value is how much work we have completed in actual. And in that previous slide, we saw that the work completed is worth uh, $60,000. Sorry. Uh, let me go back to that slide one more time. Yes, $55,000. I'm so sorry for that. The actual cost money spent is $55,000. So we do not have this on value. So we need to now calculate that how much work is completed. We have completed 20% of work. So the 20% of work of the total work means if the total work is worth $300,000, 20% of that will be $60,000. Okay. So this gives us the value for our 
second element that is earned value, the work done so far is worth $60,000 and actual cost is given to us that is $55,000. Okay. Now actual cost, you may get this information from any of the project management tool that you're using or your finance department can also give this information and using this, now we are going to check how we are doing that. We will check the, we will calculate the variances that we have. So first we are going to calculate our cost variance. So the cost variance is, uh, it is your on value minus actual cost. So the on value, the work we have done so far is worth $60,000 and the actual money that we have spent so far in this project is $55,000 and the formula is on value minus actual cost that gives you a positive value of $5,000 any positive value with respect to cost variance is good. It means you are spending less than what you had planned for. So, which is definitely a good news, but a rare situation to see in the real life. I am sure all of you would agree. <laughs> yeah. And we also calculate our schedule variance. Schedule variance is how much schedule difference we have from our plan with respect to work and dollar, uh, the dollar value of the work. So the formula for calculating schedule variance is earned value minus plan value. So the, our earned value, we already know that it is 75,000 and the plan value in two weeks time, which is 25% of the total duration, we were supposed, supposed to complete 25% of the work that is $75,000. So this gives us a value that is 60,000 minus 75,000 uh, I'm sorry, there's a typo here, so please read the last two values as SV, not the CV. So your schedule variance here is $60,000 minus $75,000, that means a negative of $15,000. Any negative value is not a good news. So it tells you that you are behind schedule by work worth $15,000. Okay. So, okay, this gives us a good information and this is gives a good perspective of, you know, how we are doing with respect to the project, but we can calculate more specific information around here. That is, we'll calculate your cost performance index and schedule performance index. So we have formula for cost performance indexes on value by actual cost. That is your, uh, and the calculated value for that is 1.09. And in the previous slide where we saw the cost variance, it was a positive value and I told you positive value is a good news. You are within your budget, you are spending less than your budget. So any value uh, greater than 1 is a good news. So your CPI is 1.09, it means you are spending less than what you had planned for. And your SPI, that is Schedule Performance Index or Indicator is 0 0.8 using this formula of earned value divided by planned value. So any value less than 1, the benchmark for CPI and SPI both is 1. Less than 1, not a good news. 1, neutral, you are on track and more than 1, it's definitely a good news, you are ahead of schedule. Okay. So in a realistic situation, uh, sorry, in a uh, very typical situation, you should get 1, 1 for both SCPI and SPI and in a very hypothetical situation, uh, I'm sorry I'm using this word hypothetical because in a real world we all know how challenging the work is, how challenging the situation is. We always get some variances, we always get some, uh, uh, you know, some delays and some challenges. So in a hypothetical situation, your CPI more than one and your SPI more than one is uh, definitely a good news. But the important point to understand, if staying behind the schedule is not a good news, then staying, staying ahead of schedule is also may not be a good news. Why? Because we have a lot of dependence, we may have a lot of dependency with other, on other project. You need to first understand the project that you're carrying out is a smaller subset of which larger program. And then you will realize that, okay, staying ahead of schedule schedule also may not be a good news at certain time. You have to ensure that you are on track always. How you can do that? For that, you need to go through this PIMBOK in detail and you need to learn and understand these processes and then you need to create your own methodology. Remember, PIMBOK 
guide is not a methodology. It is a body of knowledge. You need to pick and choose the processes relevant to you. You need to tailor those processes and then you have to prepare your own methodology which will be best suitable for your organization and also for your project. Okay, so let us conclude this on value analysis here. So we have some more calculations here. So we have done a health check at a particular point of time and now we need to see that what actions we need to take to ensure that we complete the project in time. So for that we need to calculate the estimated completion. So at this rate, how much money uh, we will end up spending when the project gets over. And since we already know our CPI or cost performance index is greater than 1, it means it is a good news. So the estimated completion, so we are making assumptions. In project, we will have to make a lot of assumptions. So the assumption that we are making here is that considering the factors that we have which are influencing the cost, they will remain the same. No changes will happen to them. So looking at those numbers, we will be able to complete this project at a lesser cost than we had planned for. And estimate to complete the work that is remaining. Okay. We have completed 25% of work and uh, sorry, we have completed 20% of work. Remaining work is 80% uh, to complete that 80% of work, how much money we need. So there are a whole lot of formulas. We do not have luxury of time to get into the details of that formulas. There are more than 25, 26 formulas which you need to go through. And when you read the PMBOK, see, there is, there is no alternative to PMBOK. If you want to clear the PMP examination, you will have to read PMBOK. When you read PMBOK, you will get a detailed information around this on value and you will get a list of all the formulas that you are going to use there. Okay? And, uh, I don't think we have time to complete uh, to talk about uh, the remaining slides that we have. So we have uh, variance at completion. We can using this formula. We can also calculate that at this pace, what will be the variance at end of the project? So we can do some forecasting around that. We can do make some projections uh, using the same assumption that okay, considering there won't be any variance further or it will maintain the pace we will have a positive variance of $24,000 at end of it. And again, negative value is not a good news and positive value is always a good news. And 